people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Novel by Lou Wallace, dramatized for radio in four parts by Catherine Schakowska. Music by Wilfredo Acosta. With Jamie Glover as Judah Ben Hur, Samuel West as Masala, Bernard Hepton as Simonides, Freddie Jones as Sheikh Ilderim, and Phyllis Calvert as Amra. The Bible is read by Michael Gambon. Part 3, The Chariot Race. After many years, and with my fortunes changed, I had at last encountered my arch-enemy, Masala. Now, we were going to compete, one against the other, in the great chariot race at Antioch. I would be driving the wonderful horses of Sheikh Ilderim. The Sheikh had intercepted a letter from Masala to Gratus, in which he admitted his guilt and the destruction of my family, but also his ignorance as to the whereabouts of my mother and sister. Perhaps this meant they were still alive. Perhaps I would find them again after all. From his letter, it was clear that Masala was treacherous, not it was clear that Masala was treacherous, not only to me, but to Ilderim as well. I thought it was time I confided in the Sheikh. When first I came to the Orchard of Palms, I told you little of my history. And I did not press you, knowing that you must have good reason for your silence. Now I feel I owe it to you to trust you with my whole story. I am honored. We are both threatened by the same enemy. When I tell you the full contents of this letter, you will understand. Masala is a liar and a coward. Listen. I saw the Jew yesterday in the Grove of Daphne. That's where he recognized me. He is now to be found at the Orchard of Palms under the tent of the traitor, Sheikh Ulderim. Traitor? Such is Masala's opinion of you. He suggests Consul Maxentius places you on ship for Rome. Oh, dare he? I am Sheikh of 10,000 horsemen, and he wants to send me to Rome like a slave? We've... When will this insolence end? I am a free man. My people are free! You are right to be angry. If I were only young again. If I were like you, son of Arius, young and strong and practiced in arms. Ah, away with all disguise on your part and mine. Son of her! For that is who you are, is it not? Yes. But how do you know? Never mind. All will be explained. But I know this, Judah Ben-Hur. If I had half your wrongs to avenge, I could not rest. I would go from land to land, firing all mankind against our Roman masters. You call me son of her with great certainty. I am, but I cannot tell you more yet. I must go to Antioch. When I return, I may be able to talk to you more fully. Now, 
Give me back the letter, for it must be sent on its way again. Here you are, sir. I have told you what I would do if I were as young and strong as you. I cannot believe that you are a coward. I will do all that you have said. I have devoted myself to plans of revenge for many years. I have learned all the arts of war. I am a soldier, but I must also learn to be a captain. Then I will be an enemy of Rome of the most deadly kind, for I know all their weaknesses. It is as good an answer as I would wish. And you are right. Revenge is a dish that is best eaten cold. Listen, son of her. I shall give you whatever you need. And we shall yet see the downfall of our Roman masters. Son of Arius! Welcome, Malak. How are you, my friend? Well, how beautifully these horses run. We are finished for the day. I don't want to overstretch them. They will do their best for me. Huh. I have a message from Sheikh Ilderim. He asks you to come to Antioch with me at once, if you please. Is that where he is? I know he left early this morning. Ride with me, Judah, and I will take you to him. Here we are. But this is Simonides' warehouse. It is. I don't understand. Come up to the house. You'll soon know everything. Peace be with you, Judah. I am and have been your good and faithful... Peace be with you, Judah. I am and have been your good and faithful servant. My peace I return to you, Simonides. But I say it as a son to a father. You can never be my servant. And Sheikh Ilderim. Yes, yes. We are old friends, are we not, Simonides? Indeed we are. Esther, bring me those documents. Here, Father. This will tell you everything you need to know, son of her. The property first, and then the relationship between us. Then you did believe me. From the very beginning. But I had to be sure of you. And Sheikh Ilderim? The Sheikh is in our confidence. He knows everything, and he is your friend as well as mine. Now you understand how I know your true name. This is very detailed. I have listed all the monies I had from your father. 120 talents. These documents show how I have used them and increased them until you now have 673 talents. That is a vast sum. No. There is nothing I cannot do. So, this is what I propose. All of these things, ships, houses, camels, horses, money, take them back again, Sir oh, They are yours my... forever, with one yeah. exception and on one condition. And what is that? Give me only the 120 talents that belong to my father and join me in the search for my mother and my sister. Of course. You have served me well, Simonides, and you are free, you and your daughter. I declare it now before witnesses and I will put it in writing if necessary. Judah, Ilderim was wrong. You cannot do everything you wish. You cannot make us free in law I am your bondsman forever. And the daughter always follows the father's condition, Judah. It was the price I paid for marrying Esther's mother. I will serve you with all my mind and heart. Only make me legally what I have been in fact all the... And the daughter always follows the father's condition, Judah. It was the price I paid for marrying Esther's mother. I will serve you with all my mind and heart. Only make me legally what I have been in fact all these years. What is that? As your steward, the care of all your property will still be mine. Nothing will change. Then that is what you are. From today, as you have been all these years, my good and faithful servant. And you, Esther, what do you want? Tell me. I only ask for one thing, sir. Let me care for my father as I have done before. As you wish. Always. I know you thought I denied your claim, Judah. But I had to be sure. I sent Malak to you. Ah, so he is your man. I suspected as much. As I said, from the first moment I saw you, I had no doubts as to who you were. You are so like your father. But I didn't know what kind of man you were. Forgive me. There is... These years, 
Every enterprise has thrived. He does not <laughs> exaggerate. The very elements seem to serve his ships. Finally, I began to believe that God had some purpose for this good fortune. You have heard Balthazar's story? About the king that is to come? Mm -hmm. What did you think of his tale? It impressed me. As he told me his story, I seemed to hear the answer to all my prayers. The king will be poor and friendless when he comes. He will have need of our fortune then. But the kingdom? Balthazar said it is to be a kingdom not of this world. That I cannot understand. Balthazar has seen many wonderful things, but he is not a Jew. He can have no special knowledge of God's dealing with Israel. And there is work that must be done to prepare for the king. There is not one trained band of men in all Israel here carrying on as normal. You must go to Jerusalem, and from there to the wilderness. You can begin training the fighting men of Israel and hoarding arms in secret places. Ilderim can help you in many ways. My tribe is at your service, and we are numerous and strong. If I take this path, I will be outlawed for life. Oh, no! No! It should not be like that! I can't bear it! Esther, I have no choice. I see that now. Very well, then. It's agreed. But one thing. I must be my own man until after the games. Gratus can't answer Masala's letter in less than seven days. I must still drive for you, Ulderim. Well, that is my good fortune. The delay will be useful. You have property inherited from your foster father? A villa near Mycenaeum and houses in Rome. The houses in Rome, at least, must be sold. We shall forestall the imperial robbers in Rome. The houses in Rome, at least, must be sold. We shall forestall the imperial robbers for once. Sheikh Ilderim, will you stay here for the night? I will. Mm. It is a weary journey back to the orchard for an old man. I will go back. I worry about the horses when I'm not there. Then, oh. Esther, see our visitor out? Yes, father. Were you ever in Rome, Esther? No. And I have no wish to go. Why not? I'm afraid of Rome. It's a very beautiful city. The temples and palaces are worth seeing. I always think of it as a monster. I don't know why you have to... Go on. Why must you make Rome your enemy? Why, why not make peace with her? Why must you ruin the rest of your life as well? What do you want me to do then? Your villa near Mycena. Is it pretty? Beautiful. Set amid gardens and fountains. It was my foster father's house. Mm. And he loved it. I shan't sell it yet. Life there must be very quiet. It is. Too quiet for me. I was falling into lazy habits there. Not a place for a soldier. Or at least not a place for a young soldier. For Arius, it was a retreat. But why do you ask? Master. Oh, don't call me that, Esther. Call me friend or, or, or brother. Yes, yes, call me brother. You remind me very much of my sister Terza. As she might have been. It's just that I cannot understand how you can prefer a life of violence and bloodshed when you might be so happy in your beautiful... Yeah, Esther, it isn't that I prefer it. Then why? They would find me. Even if I were to return peacefully to my villa, the end result would be the same. A poisoned cup, a sudden blow to the head in a dark place or a sentence obtained by perjury. Masala and Gratus would see to that. They will not rest now, knowing that I am still alive. It's terrible. I could not bear it if you... Esther? Uh, my father would be devastated. And even if I could go back and live in safety, I don't believe peace will be possible for me now. My family are still lost to me. If, by some chance, they are alive, I must find them. If they are dead, I must avenge them. Can nothing else be done? Do you care about me so much? Yes, I believe I do. Thank you, mm, my little sister. Look, that galley will shortly be leaving. I do. Thank you, 
Mm, my little sister. Look! That galley will shortly be leaving. It will carry my father's agent. He will sell your property in Rome for you. And the die will be cast. Oh, Judah! I must go, Esther. But will you come back soon? I will. Take care, little sister. I looked back. She was standing alone on the terrace, watching me. She raised her hand in salute and then turned back to her father's house. I saw her as little more than a child. When I thought of love at all, which was seldom, it was the enticing image of the Egyptian Iras that came to mind. Malok, how are things going at the circus? I brought the race bill. We've complied with all the necessary regulations. Even now, boys are selling white ribbons along the streets of the city. And tomorrow, we will see that every Jew and Arab in Antioch will be wearing one. Excellent news. The dignitaries will all bet on the Roman. Just because he is a Roman. Then they will lose. <laughs> I'm thinking of taking wages myself. Yes, Malak. Do. Listen. You must look for bets with Masala and his supporters. Ilderim's four against Masala's team. I will put up the money. Yes, of course. I want the contest between us to be as public as it can be. If I can break his fortune as well as his pride, so much the better. Yes. And listen, Malak, don't stop with Sestershai. If any of them want to wager talents, so be it. <laughs> but it must be between me and Masala only. There will be enormous sums involved. I will stand security, and so will Masala if I know him. He thinks he is invincible. Go and see Simonides and tell him of our plans. He will approve. Our enemy will be ruined. Judah. He thinks he is invincible. Go and see Simonides and tell him of our plans. He will approve. Our enemy will be ruined. Judah. Look at this. What? The race program. Look at the entries. <clears throat> A four of Masala of Rome, two white, two black, driver Masala. A four of Ilderim, Sheikh of the Desert, all bays, driver Ben-Hur, a Jew. What? But I entered you as son of Arius. Precisely. Someone has changed it. Who? Masala, of course. But let it stand. At least now he knows his enemy. I'm so tired. What on earth is wrong with you, Drusus? There are so many people in the city. We met a rabble from Jerusalem. Oh, yes. Uh, Missala, there's a man outside us, a man outside asking to see you. What do you want? He says he has a proposal for you. <laughs> really? <laughs> Have him sent in. We might as well hear his proposal. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sirs. He looks like a Jew. What can he want? Come in, come in. Don't stand on ceremony or among friends. Most noble Romans, I salute you. You see the colours I wear? Yes, white, like the scum from Jerusalem. Drusus, you must treat a guest politely. Forgive him, sir, he is young and a trifle brash. <coughs> Sirs, I noticed in the city that offers on Messala were going without takers. So here I am. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're prepared to take bets? I am. Well, well, well. So, to the matter in hand, gentlemen, odds first, amounts next. What will you give me? Two to one. What? A Roman against a Jew and only two to one? I'll wager three. Oh, five. Surely, who will bet me five? Six to one, let it be. Masala of Rome in wager with Malak, a merchant. Hmm. I thought you had more about you than a common Israelite. Says he will beat Ben-Hur, the Jew. Amount of wager... 20 talents. <laughs> will you not sign it, sir? Where are your 20 talents? Show me. <laughs> if you will also read this, sir. The bearer has to his order with me 50 talents in the coin of Caesar. <laughs> Simonides the merchant. No. <laughs> he lies. Who but Caesar himself has 50 talents to order? No, Simonides has the money. It's true enough. Write five instead of twenty. I can't go to twenty, not even for this. Make it six and I will write it down. The man is very rash with his master's money. Let it be six talents, then. <laughs> the Jewish driver has no chance. What can he know of the circus? He may know more than you think. An 
and so... Would it be six talents, then? <laughs> the Jewish driver has no chance. What can he know of the circus? He may know more than you think. And so it was done. We had placed them in an impossible position. Should I win the race, which I intended to, Masala's whole fortune would be at stake. That night, I slept soundly for the first time in many long years and awoke refreshed on the morning of the most important day of my life. Jacob know nothing of driving. But look how cool and self-assured he is. And look at his horses. Arabs are pure blood, surely. How can he lose with such fine beasts? Yes, but can he drive them? They say he's Roman tall. I'll tell you this much. He's even more handsome than the Roman. Be quiet. What's it to do with you? I was only saying... Yeah. A hundred on the Jew! Fool! Don't you know they're betting at six to one on Misala? And don't you know that it was Misala betting on himself? A hundred on the Jew, I say! Will anyone take my word? you uncover your face, Esther? You'll see nothing while well, there. I'm not used to being out and about like you, Iris. Crowds frighten me. Why? There is no need. We have your father and Sheikh Hilderim for protection. No one will come near us. Do you see our friend yet? Son of Iris. Isn't that him? At number two. He gave me his colors for well. Did he? Oh, look! There is Masala at number one, is it? Handsome. He can't. Isn't that him? At number two. He gave me his colors to wear. Did he? Oh, look. There is Masala at number one, is it? Handsome. He can't be more handsome than Ben Hur. You think not? Just wait and see. If my children are to be beaten today, I pray only that it may be by someone other than Messiah. Don't even think about defeat. The wagers are all taken. Last night they sent messengers to me asking if you, Malak, had so much money. I told them if Ben Hur loses, you know where to come and we will pay. But if we win, we will hold them to the last shekel, for they would do the same with us. Uh, they would, they would. They're approaching the start. For my dear mother and sister, for all that I have lost, for the king of the Jews that is to come, and for vengeance. Run, my beauties, run. Run as you have never run in your lives before. For Rome! For Mars! But most of all, to vanquish that Jewish upstart, Judah Ben-Hur, I, Masala, will win. Be with me, gods. Be with me. Jews, be with us! Jews, be with us! Cleanthes, the axle of 
Masala's chariot caught his horse's legs. No! They're carrying him off. You can look again, Esther. Oh, Iris! You're too soft-hearted. There are bound to be casualties. Look! Judah's in the lead! For the time being. But there are seven more laps to go. That's it, my beauties. Run! Run! Remember, Judah! Down near us! Up Mars! Ah! Did you see that? Did you see how that scoundrel Masala treats my children? If he survives this race, I will kill him with my bare hands! Then her will lose control of them! Calm yourselves! I've never an answer! Calm me! That's it! Now, onwards! Onwards! He has them in hand! He has such strength in his arms! So I see! You're right, child! He has them under control again! What gives him such strength? It came from the galleys! From all those years at the oar! A fitting irony for Rome! The sixth round, and they are still neck and neck. 500 sesterci on Masala. Keep your money. Why, have you no faith in our friend? Masala is at his top speed. Look how he leans over the chariot. And then look how calm the Jew is. If the gods don't help our friend now, the Jew will run away with the prize and our money. But not yet. Jove is with us. Masala is drawing ahead. Masala is drawing ahead. Masala is ahead. Look, Esther. Oh, Lord. Please don't let the Roman win. Please. I'm no judge of racing, Sheikh, but it seems to me as though Judah is following some plan of his own. You are right. Don't you see how clean and fresh the horses are? Oh, Simonides! My children have not yet been running! You have seen nothing yet! Masala thinks he has the race in his grasp. They're on the last lap. Now watch them. Now he will give them their heads. The last lap! Judah! Judah! Now, it is the last lap. On, my stars. On. On to victory! Now near us! At last! Never! <laughs> Masala is down! He drove too close! Where is his chariot is splintered! The horses are trampling him! Then who will win! There's no one else to take him! He has his revenge! And so have we! The dead! What more can I offer you, my... What more can I offer you, my dear young man? And why will you take so little... The humiliation of Masala was all I wanted. Besides, I may have need of your help and support of the coming king. I will be in your debt, always. Nothing would be enough to repay you for this day. Judah! Yes, Malak? I have messages for you from Simonides. <laughs> Do you know, at the close of the game, some of the Romans protested against payment of the prize money. What? Because Masala was so badly injured. How dare they? The prize must be paid! Calm yourself. The prize money has been paid in full. The adjudicator reminded Masala's party of the blow he gave to our bays earlier on. Uh, what happened to the Athenian? Cleanthes. He is dead. And Masala escaped with his life. What luck these Romans have! I don't know about luck, Judah. 
His pride will never accept that. And there's more news. The Romans who wagered with us are now refusing to pay. <laughs> what? They have referred the matter to Caesar. Masala has also refused to pay his debts, or cannot meet them. What? The matter is now with the consul. If he does not pay, he will be utterly dishonored. And if he does pay, he'll be ruined! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he will do? Simonides says he will pay. There would be too much offense caused if he didn't. Mm. It has become a matter of politics, and he will be made to pay. Yes. But uh, I almost forgot. There's another messenger waiting outside. Uh, I'll see him. Come in, young man. Come in. Ira's daughter, Balthazar, has asked me to send congratulations to you, Sheikh Ilderim, on your magnificent victory. Mm. Give her my thanks. Uh, where is she and her father staying? In the palace of Iderni, sir. And she has a further message for the hero Ben-Hur. For me? Yes, sir. I'm to... Is it the fair Egyptian? Uh, ah, <laughs> why not indeed? The man must enjoy his youth while he can. Tell your mistress that I will see her at the palace of Iderni tomorrow. Yes, sir. of Adirne was an apt setting for Iris. Winged lion sat by the stairs. In the middle of the courtyard, there was a gigantic ibis spouting water over the floor. The lions, ibis, walls and floor were all reminders of Egypt. But all I could think of as I wandered through the vast empty rooms of this palace was that she had sent for me. But where was she? My lady? Iris! Iris? Iris! Daughter of Egypt! Where are you? Iras? No, not Iras. Who is this lady that you are waiting for? Who are you? Barbarians. This is the palace of Idurni. What are you doing here? Who are you looking for? Who are you? A Roman. <laughs> not even a god can make a Roman of a Jew. Come, let's get this over with. Wait. I don't know your companion, but I know you. You are Thor, the Northman. What makes you say so? Do you want me to make an end of him, Thor? Just say the word. No. Let him speak. You are Lanista in Rome, in the Circus Maximus. I was. But how do you know? I was once your student. That cannot be. I've had no Jewish pupils. But I can prove it, Thor. What is all this rubbish? He's just trying to buy time. Wait. I was once your student. That cannot be. I've had no Jewish pupils. But I can prove it, Thord. What is all this rubbish? He's just trying to buy time. Wait. I'm curious. How can you prove it? You came here to kill me. Am I right? True enough, but not hard to guess. Let your friend there fight me alone, and I will show you proof enough of the skills you taught me. Are you willing? No problem. He's a Jew, isn't he? Jews don't fight. You'll wrestle, then. No weapons. Wait. Until I say... No! The assassin was an easy opponent. He underestimated me. I almost felt sorry for him. He had no idea of my strength, nor of the tricks that Thord had taught me. He's dead. But you used my trick, 
a feint with the right hand. And that grip, I remember that grip. Who would forget it? You had me down a few times. I remember. But your name. I can't remember your name. You can't be a Jew. Who are you? Do you remember the son of Arius? Yes, indeed. He would have made a king gladiator. Caesar himself offered him patronage, but you... Yes. It is you, isn't it? Yes. I am son of Arius. Oh, well met, my friend. But he told me I would find a Jew here, a dog of a Jew. He told me I would be serving the gods, killing you. I should have known there was more to it than that if he was involved. If who was involved? Messala. Last night. He hired us last night. I thought you... That if he was involved. If who was involved? Messala. Last night. He hired us last night. I thought he was badly injured. He'll never walk again, that's for sure. He summoned us to his bedside. Thord, what was Masala going to give you for killing me? A thousand sestershai. I can give you that. And if you do as I ask now, I will add another three thousand to the sum. <laughs> I won five thousand yesterday, betting against Mesala in the race, and that was thanks to you. If I can get the thousand out of him, give me four more, good Arias, and I will stand firm for you. Ten thousand is a fortune, Thord. You can open that wine shop near the Great Circus in Rome and live like the hero you are. How did you know about that? I remember you better than you remember me. Isn't it what you always said you wanted? It is. And it's what I will do. Listen. This dead man looks a little... Hmm. He's much the same build and colouring. What were you to do with me after the murder? Dispose of the body? No. Our instructions were to kill you and get away as fast as we could. Others have been paid to get rid of the body. Well, if I put on his tunic and dress him in my clothes and leave him here, you can go back and get your Sestershai from Masala by telling him that I am dead. Those that get rid of the body will bear you out. <laughs> I've never won 10,000 Sestershai so easily. A wine shop in the Great Circus. Give me your hand, son of Arius. And if ever you come to Rome, don't fail to ask for the wine shop of Thord the Northman. I'll give you the best wine there is. Judah, who else? She is imperious, haughty even, but she is no traitor. She would scorn the very word. That is true enough. Besides, what reason has she to betray you? Masala has spies everywhere. It would be like him to send me a message in her name. He will never rest until he has me murdered. Oh, Judah. Well, he must think that he has succeeded. So what must we do? After a few days, you must see to it that inquiry is made for me. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the matter will be taken to Maxentius for investigation. But there will be no solution to the mystery. And then both Masala and Gratus will be satisfied. Meanwhile, I will be free to go to Jerusalem in search of my family. God go with you, my son. Esther, see Judah out. Of course, Father. I'm sorry to see you go. I'm sorry to have to leave. I'm sorry to see you go. I'm sorry to have to leave. Oh, Judah. You could have been killed. But I was not. Nevertheless. Don't look so sad. Goodbye, Esther. Take care. Mm. Goodbye, Judah. You take care. Don't cry. We'll meet again before long. Look after your father. I always do. And let's hope our next meeting is happier than our parting. I'm sure it will be. Goodbye, Judah. And God bless you. God keep you safe. And so I left her in tears. I loved her warmth and her care for me. But I still thought of her. 
Some 30 days after I left Antioch, events of great moment took place. Valerius Gratus was unexpectedly succeeded as governor of Judea by Pontius Pilate. With the removal of Gratus, I afterwards found out, cost Simonides five talents, paid to Sejanus, who was at that time very much an imperial favorite. The change of ruler was not much better for the Jews, but Pilate did at least one good deed to mark his accession to power. He ordered an inspection of all the prisons in Judea, and an amnesty of sorts. The revelations of Gratus's villainy were astonishing. Hundreds of people were released, against whom no accusations had ever been brought. Many came to light who had long been thought dead. Dungeons were opened, the existence of which had actually been forgotten by the prison. Ah, oh, Josias, come in. There's so much business to attend to. What did Gratus do with his time, I wonder? I don't know, sir. But I have here a report about the Tower of Antonia. There's an underground prison there. Yes, I've heard of it. A place where revolutionaries were kept. Um, What's the matter? <sighs> oh, another mistake, eh? Seems my predecessor made a great many mistakes. If I could persuade myself that it was a simple mistake, I wouldn't be as upset as I am. Your crime, then? Or a breach of duty? How long have you been keeper of prisons, Josias? Eight years, sir. I well remember the morning I began work. There had been a riot the day before, and there was fighting in the streets of Jerusalem. A riot? They said it all began when a young Jew tried to assassinate Gratus by throwing a tile from a roof. Oh, yes, I heard something of that. But what has this to do with you? You haven't found Jerusalem. A riot? They said it all began when a young Jew tried to assassinate Gratus by throwing a tile from a roof. Oh, yes, I heard something of that. But what has this to do with you? You haven't found him locked away in the Tower of Antonia, have you? No, that wouldn't be so bad. Go on, then. Sir, on the day I began work, Gratus gave me the keys of my calling and a map of the cells. Mm -hmm. I was to acquaint myself with all the cells and their inmates, except one. Yes? I have the map he gave me here. Now, this cell, number five, he told me contained three desperate criminals uh, revolutionaries had plotted against Rome. They were not to be approached under any circumstances. Their food and drink were to be placed through a hole in the wall. So to all practical intents, these men were entombed. Well, he must have had good reason. Well, he had his reasons, sir, though whether they were good or not, you must judge for yourself. What do you mean? He told me the cell was leprous. Well, that was true enough. Cell number five. So? For eight years, you've wasted the food of two men. What does that signify? Sir, today, according to your orders, cell number five was opened. And there we found the one man, blind and tongueless, but in great distress. Obviously. The prisoner led me to a hole in the back wall, like the one through which we pushed the food to him for eight years. Two people had been walled up there for no one knows how long. Who's there? Is there anybody alive in there? The Lord be praised. Who are you? A woman of Israel, entombed here with her daughter. Help us or we shall die. I must speak to Pilate the Tribune about this. Help us, please. I won't be long, I promise. There have been better Romans in our history than Valerius Gratus. The other better Romans in our history than Valerius Gratus. The other prisoner had given the women food and drink over the years, and so had kept them alive. Thank God he lived so long, or they would have died a terrible death. Come. Let us set them free at once. The door of the cell is filled with stones and mortar, sir. Have workmen sent after us with tools. We shouldn't leave them there a moment longer than we have to. Will that man come back, Mother? Hush, darling. God is good. Oh. Our prayers will be answered at last. He will come back. I do try to be strong. I do so want to live for you and Judah. But my tongue burns and my lips are so dry. I... But my tongue 
burns and my lips are so dry. I so often think of your brother. Oh, do you believe he is still alive? I dreamed about him last night. We were in the women's court in the city, and he came and looked here and there. I stretched out my arms to him and called him. He heard me and saw me, but he didn't know me. Oh. And then he was gone. That's what would probably happen. We are so much changed. He is still my son and your brother. Oh, Mother, I'm so thirsty. Just a drop. Of water. Just a drop. Patience, Terza. In here, sir. Listen. Somebody is coming. Stand away from the wall if you can. We're going to break. Oh, they'll soon be through. Oh. Could it be due to Mother? Do you think he has found us at last? No, darling, it can't be due to. <laughs> <coughs> I'm coming in. No, sir, you mustn't come near us. The cell was leprous and we are unclean. Oh, God. Stand back, I say, we are lepers. Then the gods help them, sir, for we cannot. Tell me your names. Who put you here and for what crime? There was once in this city a prince named Ben Hur. I know of him. And you? I am his widow. This poor girl is his child. I don't know why we were put here. Valerius Gratus knows more of this than I do. Oh, sir, whoever you are, have pity on us. Plead with Gratus for us. Gratus has no power to harm you further. I am governor of Judea now. Of Judea now. You shall have food and drink. Oh, praise be to God. Fresh clothing, whatever you wish. May the peace of God go with you, sir. Tonight I will have you escorted to the gate of the tower and set free. You know the law. You must leave the city and live with... With our kind, I know, sir. But at least we will breathe fresh air once more and see the sun and the stars shining in God's heaven. Little enough. But at least you will have that. This all happened, perhaps, on the very day that I reached Jerusalem for the first time in so many years. Malak was to meet me there and help me in my search. In view of my future intentions, it was better that I kept myself in hiding from the Romans. I had no idea where I might begin my search. I knew that my old Egyptian nurse, Mra, was alive and living in what had been our house. Simonides had kept her supplied over the years with money and food. I thought, therefore, to seek her out. But the house appeared derelict. Of Amra, there was no sign. Worn out by my journey and full of the deepest misery, I lay on the step and slept. This is it, Terza. Our home. Can't we stop here? You know that is not possible. But it is empty. We should be safe in there. We would not. Oh. When morning came, they would see us. They would put us out of the gates of the city, and then we could oh. never come back again. Oh. Come. There's someone sleeping on the doorstep. There's something familiar about him. What are you doing? Mother? I must see. I must be sure. As the Lord lives, it is my son. He is not the same. He is a man, but he is still my son. Judah, don't wake him. He must not see us like this. It would kill him to see what has become of us. Oh, Judah! No. You must not even kiss his hand. We are unclean. Oh, oh Judah, my dear darling child. Someone is coming. We must not be caught here. Oh. Hurry, daughter. Jude. Oh. Oh. My Jude. Oh. Oh. Is it you? Is it really you? Oh. Oh. My mother. Oh. Terza, can you tell me what has happened to them? Oh. 
Is it you? Is it really you? Camera. My mother. Terza, can you tell me what has happened to them? There's nothing to tell. Come in. Come in with me. Oh, Judah! You cannot go, Terza. We would be hideous in his sight. What must we do? We must be gone. Oh. We are of the dead and must go to the dead. So close, and yet I knew nothing of their presence. They left the city, ghosts, shadows in the night, and I took possession once more of my father's house. Three of Ben Hur by Lou Wallace, dramatized in four parts by Catherine Chukavska, with music by Wilfredo Acosta, Jamie Glover played Judah Ben Hur, Samuel West Masala, Bernard Hepton Simonides, Freddie Jones Sheikh Ilderim, and Phyllis Calvert Amra. Gavin Muir, Esther Deborah Berlin, Iris Becky Hindley, Ben Hur's mother, Margaret John, Terza Natasha Pine, Ford Michael Tudor Barnes, Drusus Ian Masters. Other parts were played by Neville Jason, Oliver Senton, Joshua Taub, and Peter Yap. The Bible was read by Michael Gamble. Sound design by Wilfredo Acosta. Ben Hur is directed by Glyn Dearman. Tomorrow, in the final chapter of the story, wants to become of Ben-Hur and his family. It looks like a prophet with 12 